Have you ever thought about what the purpose of publicity is? Well, it's to spread your story as an artist. We sat down with Curtis Smith, founder of Maelstrom Public Relations and Marketing. Curtis has worked with such artists as No Doubt, Tupac, among many, many others. We discuss the importance of building press for a new artist and at what point you need to be pursuing that, as well as many things that you can be doing on your own before launching a PR campaign and much, much more. Coming up. This episode of the Mubu TV Insider Video Series is brought to you by the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 30 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a r Registry, the Film and Television Music Guide, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Hi. We're coming to you live from the Muse Expo here in Hollywood. We managed to catch up with Maelstrom Music's owner, Curtis Smith. Curtis, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Curtis, I wanted to ask you, tell us about Maelstrom Music and how you started the company. Okay. Maelstrom Music basically was started in 1994 as a hobby. It started as a part-time hobby. What I was doing at the time was I was scouting for a production company. And we were looking for artists that were involved in putting out their own music. And uh, I get to a point where they got to a point, the bands that would put out their music, but they had no way of promoting it. So I didn't find it uh, all that interesting to put music out there, but not be able to get it to the people. So I started Maelstrom Music as a hobby to basically get some exposure for the artists at that point um, in an inexpensive way so that they can reach an audience that major label artists could do the same. So that's how it started. Let me ask you then, in in working with artists, in your experience, at what point should an artist start thinking about, you know, marketing and PR? At what point in their in their career? Well, you know, I find it interesting because a lot of artists don't really know about promotion. What they're thinking about is putting a record out, getting their getting their craft down, recorded, and and get to that process. And so during that process, they don't really know that there's another half to it, which is to actually get it to the masses. And so as they concentrate on that, and I I ran into this back in 93, 94, when we were doing this production company, that they would put the music out there and they'd have a thousand CDs, which that time was the technology, uh, but they wouldn't know what to do with them. They would sit under their beds and (laughs) they'd pass out a few to their friends and such, but nobody really knew how to market themselves. So the time to start thinking about marketing, and this is back then as just as it is now, is probably around the mixing and mastering phase. So when you're in the studio and you've tracked your music and you've gotten to the point where you've mixed it, mm-hmm. you get to the point where you're mastering and you're boxing it all in to make a nice little package. That's the time you you need to start thinking about creating your bio history. You need to start thinking about your photo shoots, your image, things like that that you want to portray to people. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you have your album artwork set up, you know, so you have your package basically. And at the same time, you have to think about lead time for magazines because a lot of the major publications out there have three month lead time. Some are one to two months, but majority of them are three. And so what you need to do is think along those lines and make sure that you're meeting the standards for them well ahead of what you have going on in your mind currently as far as recording. So once you get to that point, you're able to stay ahead of the game or stay along with it just as an editor would in their magazine. Let me ask you, are are PR needs different for the various genres? Uh, You know, sometimes in some cases, yes. Uh, In other cases, it's usually the same. It's really about catering to the editor or the writer as far as PR goes or the blogger or whatever that you're, you know, trying to focus on. Uh, It's really about 
reaching what they're looking for or, or catering to their needs in order to get what you want as a PR person for your clients, basically. So it's, it's, it's different. One way is it depends on the market. If you're reaching out, say if you're hip hop uh, PR, things move really fast. Things are short as far as uh, longevity concerns. Things move really quick. Whereas if you're, say, Americana or something like that, things tend to gradually go ahead. But they're a slow burn. It takes a while. The thing that I find interesting is that both, and in fact, all genres basically have a high demand. Now, there's, there's a saturation point with all artists in all genres. And so it's not just about reaching those certain people and, and full, following, their line, you know, following their lines, mm -hmm. but it's more about reaching on your level to them. And so that's, the, like I said, the timing and the, and the way things are promoted are interesting in that if you're in one genre, it goes fast, another genre goes slow. But it's the approach either way that is stays that stays the same basically. That, that's the consistent part. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some of the things that independent artists can be doing on their own? Uh, let's say prior to releasing a record, PR wise. Quite a bit <laughs> in this okay. world nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're if you're a say a baby band on a major label, you're going through artist development, mm -hmm. and so you have a team of people that help you along that will more or less train you on how things work. You also have management that will be your liaison between you and the label for all the different departments, and they help you along as well so you can focus on your craft being music. Uh, an independent artist is all of that in one unit. They happen to be their own manager, their own tour manager, their own uh, band itself. They do everything. So they have to know the structure of how a major label does it and kind of stay in tune with that in order to get the same type of results for them. Okay. Um, how important is press today in terms of helping a band go from, you know, being unsigned in terms of getting signed as far as like reviews or great live show? I mean, yeah. Press is, for an independent artist, press is everything. It, the, it's all about the exposure. And there's so many mediums now out there other than just, you know, print media. You've got blogs, you've got internet radio, you have interactive radio, you've got syndicated radio. You know, all these elements, video, you know, YouTube and whatnot. All these elements are creating exposure opportunities for an independent artist. So if you have your exposure and your awareness level brought up to a point where people recognize you, then you're going to be able to achieve more from that because your numbers and your fan base will grow. If your it always comes down to the music. If your music is good, people will listen and they and they will enjoy it and they will like it and they will follow you. Now we have all these different social media platforms. There's a plethora of them now. You've got tons of blogs. I mean, millions, really. <laughs> You've got internet radio all over the world. The key is, where do you get the most bang for your buck? Is it with the big one-time shot? Or can you reach a whole bunch of people on the outside and bring it in-house when the time's right? It's kind of like when... I guess a good example would be the Ramones, for example. They were here in New York. They were doing, you know, the CBGB circuit. But they weren't going anywhere. I mean, they were going only so far. Then they went to England. They went to London. They went outside of their backyard, so to speak. And they got huge. You know, over there, they were massive. Then they brought it back to the United States. And that's where they really became what they were. That's in my opinion. Because they had a story. Exactly. That's right. Okay. And so, but they did it from the outside and came back in with it. A number of artists might try to, it, it gets different in the world of A&R as opposed to exposure. A&R, you're trying to build, you're following in a local area and build onward now from that point. But with press and exposure, sometimes it doesn't work that way. You're better off probably in, in some cases going to people that would love your music, but don't have access to it. So you approach them, and then as you build your audience from them, you bring that back, and it creates, like you said, a story. And that's how things grow. Uh, in, your, in your experience, what's the biggest mistake or the most common mistake that you see artists making that's avoidable? <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> but I would say 
when they stay focused on trying to get a record deal. I would say that the independent artist that's shopping their deal, so to speak, there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's the only thing you're focused on, then you're missing so many opportunities to get your music out there. I think that a combination of the two helps. I think a DIY approach is always really uh, important because they want to see what you're doing for yourself more so than they want you to see what they'll do for you. And if that approach is, if you approach it that way as an artist, people will come to respect you as a band for that reason, in addition to, of course, like in music. Okay. In terms of budget, what kind of budget should an artist plan for when looking at PR services? That's a good question. Um, there's a number of different types of budgets in it, and there's a number of different types of PR firms. Uh, there's PR firms that cater towards, you know, A-list clients that, you know, are on a major label level. And so they'll focus with the publicist at that level to work with bands that maybe they don't have time to work with or their plates full or whatever. Then you have other PR firms that are working with the independent artists, such like ourselves, that are trying to focus on building their awareness and recognition for, you know, so they can reach a point where people are gonna really enjoy what they're doing to a point where others will take notice. Um, budget wise, when you're on a major level, you have a budget already planned, set out, and then the publicist charges accordingly towards that budget, depending on what that budget is. So if you're a smaller band, you're gonna have a smaller budget, but if you're a well-known successful band, you're gonna have a larger budget to, you know, have to work with. With an independent artist, you have to budget the whole thing. In other words, you have you have um, recording, uh, mixing, mastering, producer, if you have one, and all that. A, a good idea would be, a very good idea would be to take the budget that you have for what you think you have for recording and make that your budget for promotion. So if you have let's say a $10,000 budget for recording, mm -hmm. you should plan a $10,000 budget for PR, promotion and whatnot. Okay. So I would say it on the level, it should be the same. Some really valuable pieces of information and insights from Curtis. For those of you who are looking to generate publicity for your music career on your own. So insiders, question of the day. What did you find were the most useful things that Curtis spoke about in our discussion regarding building publicity for yourself as an artist? Was it at what point you should start thinking about marketing and PR for your music career? Or was it how PR needs differ depending on your genre of music? Or was it what you can actively be doing on your own prior to your release? Or maybe it was something else that stood out to you. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to Mubu TV for more information on how to educate, empower, and engage your music career. You can also check out a summary of this episode and everything we talked about in the description below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd really love it if you hit the like button and let us know what other kinds of videos and types of content you want to see on our channel. Hit us up in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.